Eckhart is now in session. Today, the chamber continues to hear the remaining testimony of witness Moi Wan Ni and begin hearing testimony of a, another witness that is through TCW 988. Ms. Jesu Huang, please report to the attendance of the parties and other individuals to today's proceedings. Grafji, Mr. President, for today's proceedings, all parties to this case are present, except the National Litco Lawyer for Civil Parties who is absent for personal reasons. Mr. Nuji is present in the holding cell downstairs. He has waived his right to be present in the courtroom. The waiver has been delivered to the uh, Grafji. The witness who is to conclude his testimony today, that is Mr. Mui Bani, is present in the courtroom. The witness who is to testify next, that is to TCW 988, took an oath before the Iron Club State to yesterday. And he has uh, Counsel Mung Sawan as his duty counsel. Thank you. President, uh, thank you, Ms. Ji Siu Huang. The Chamber now decides on the request by Nun Ji. The Chamber has received a waiver from Nun Ji dated 12 January 2016, which states that due to his health, headache, back pain, he cannot sit or, con or concentrate for long, and in order to effectively participate in future hearings, he requests to waive his rights to participate in and be present at the 12th January 2016 hearing. Having seen the medical report of Nun Chi by the duty doctor for the accused at the ECCC, dated 12 January 2016, which notes that Nun Chi has severe back pain when he sits for long, and recommends that the chamber grant him his request so that he can follow the proceedings remotely from the holding cell downstairs. Based on the above information and pursuant to Rule 815 of the ECCC internal rules, the chamber grants Nuji his request to follow today's proceedings remotely from the holding cell downstairs via audiovisual means. The chamber instructs the AB unit personnel to link the proceedings to the room downstairs so that Noon Chia can follow. This applies to the whole day. And the chamber now hands the floor to the defense team for Akil Sampon to continue putting further questions to this witness. You may proceed. Merci, Monsieur le Président. Bonjour. Thank you, Mr. President. Uh, good morning to all of you. Good morning to your witness, Mwibani. I'm going to continue uh, and take up from where we stopped yesterday. I would like to remind you, however, that it's necessary for you to listen carefully to my questions and to answer these questions as precisely as possible. You spoke yesterday, therefore, about uh, your work within uh, a mobile unit uh, that was attached to the district, if I understood you correctly, and you told us that back then the people who made up this unit uh, were young people between the ages of 20 to 30. So uh, can you tell us where you were stationed? Where was your mobile unit stationed at that time? It varied as I was part of the district mobile unit. We were constantly uh, mobile from one work size to the other. So maybe my question wasn't sufficiently precise, uh, so I apologize. So when you witnessed the arrest you described yesterday, where were you stationed? Uh, I was in a commune. And where exactly in Zdao Commune were you? Uh, 
I was in a village. Vous avez un... You said uh, that uh, when uh, you saw people standing in row who apparently had been arrested, you said that you were returning from a place uh, where you cleared grass and that you were riding an ox cart. So can you tell us if you were alone on that ox cart or if there were other people with you? There were uh, two or three ox carts uh, at the time, and we were assigned to uh, cut the grass at a far uh, distant place. It was uh, in Mokampul uh, district. So we were divided into different groups, and my group arrived uh, rather late. And uh, halfway through our journey, I saw what happened, and when we returned to our sleeping quarters at a mobile unit, the situation was uh, rather quiet. You said yesterday that in your unit there was a majority of Cham people. So are you speaking about this mobile unit, or are you speaking about another mo unit here? I refer to my uh, unit, and that is uh, the unit that I was attached to, and uh, there was a mixture of uh, the Cham and the Khmer people, and it was a small, a mobile unit. So we agree, therefore, that uh, the day when you came back uh, from clearing on the ox cart, you were part of this unit that included Cham people as well as Khmer, as well as Khmer people. Is that correct? Bye. Yes, that is correct. In my notes, I noted uh, that uh, you said uh, that in this small unit, there were about five Khmer people and 25 Cham people. Did I understand your testimony properly? I cannot uh, recall the exact uh, words that I used. However, if there is uh, what I stated previously, I uh, stand by it. Uh, this event took place a long time ago. Well. In fact, I don't want to put words in your mouth. I just want you to tell us uh, the story as best as you can You remember it. So as far as you remember it, can you r tell us how many Cham people and how many Khmer people there were within your unit? I did not pay much attention uh, to that, and I only knew some of them, and uh, not all. As for the names, also I only uh, knew uh, some of uh, their names. My main attention was uh, focusing on the work assigned to me. Although we, was, we were in the same uh, small unit, I did not uh, know everyone. Is it exactly is it true, therefore, that under these conditions, you did not necessarily know who was Cham and who was Khmer? Yes, and what I can recall is that those people who were arrested were all a Cham because there were uh, not many uh, Khmer in uh, the unit. 
because if everyone had to be arrested, it means uh, the Khmer people had to be uh, gone too. It means there would be no one left in the unit. Yesterday at around uh, 10.31 in the morning, you said that when you came back on the ox cart, it was about 6 o'clock in the evening, and today you're telling us that there were many other ox carts. So who uh, was uh, riding these ox carts? Do you remember? Nothing. I was assigned uh, alone to uh, cut uh, the grass. However, other members of the unit were assigned to uh, various villages within the commune to perform different tasks. And I myself was assigned uh, to uh, catch the grass with the village, with uh, the people from the uh, kitchen unit. You said, therefore, that it was around 6 o'clock in the evening, and yesterday you said that you only recognized one or two people in the row. So must I understand from your testimony that it was dark then? Yes. Since you only recognized one or two people, how can you be sure that all of the people who were arrested were Cham? Because uh, in my unit, all the Cham people were arrested and there were only a few uh, left and they were all Khmer. But you just told me a little earlier that you did not necessarily know who was Khmer and who was Cham. Donc comment so therefore, how were you able to, how can you assert that? As I stated from the beginning, the people who were uh, called to go were all a charm and if everyone in my unit had to be called it means I myself would uh, have been called too. So if I understood your testimony well, you arrived when the people had already been gathered and were already standing in a row. So you already came across these people on your way. So that is to say that you were not uh, present when these people were called together. Am I correct? Bah. Yes. Donc. So therefore, is it true that you do not know exactly under which conditions these arrests took place? Bah. Yes. And the other people who are on other ox carts went to other villages, as far as you said. So must I understand that these people belong to another unit? Um. Yes, they did. And did you know these people? Did you know where these people came from? No, I did not. You said yesterday as well that uh, a certain number of Cham people in your unit uh, came from Angkor Ban and from Saxo. So, 
had you already been to Saxo and to Angkor Ban? Uh, later on, I uh, knew of that uh, village. In Kong Mi district, uh, there were about uh, two communes where the Cham people uh, resided. Vous me dites You're telling me later. You said that later you got to know both of these villages. But my question was, when you were in the mobile unit, had you already gone to these villages? No, I did not. It's exactly so therefore, is it true that uh, you knew nobody from these villages, and therefore, you did not know the Cham people with whom you worked within the mobile units before working with them? I did not uh, know them all because our unit, because it was a mixture, but it is my uh, understanding that uh, Cham people resided in two communes, Uncle Ban and another commune. However, uh, such so was a village within that commune. Um. Now I would like to get back to um, the period during which uh, you worked uh, at uh, the Wat Otrakun Pagoda for Horn. And yesterday at 10.17 in the morning, you said that you did not spend all of your time at the pagoda, but that generally you would stay with uh, the commune soldiers. So I'd like you to clarify this uh, point. When you answered uh, my colleague Victor Coppe yesterday, you said that you would spend maybe one or two nights at the pagoda, and then you would spend the other nights elsewhere. So can you specify to the chamber where these commune soldiers were stationed? The commune soldiers um, with whom you spent time uh, when you were not at the pagoda. At that time, uh, we were uh, stationed in various communes, namely uh, Ripai, and usually we would be stationed at the outskirts uh, where there were forests. And parts of the forces were used, for example, for various other tasks uh, to dig and carry dirt. However, I did not know every single village uh, situated within the communes. I only knew locations where I was stationed, namely Kiaru village. Yes, and do I understand you properly? when you say that when you were stationed with these commune soldiers, you were accompanying Hong when he would come to inspect uh, the, um, uh, the military stations. Yes, that is correct. And you say that it is with the commune soldiers that you remained. But what about the district soldiers? Did you know where they were stationed? I think you, you got confused. The person was in charge of the district soldiers. However, allow me to clarify, those district soldiers were stationed in various communes under that uh, district. 
and they might be stationed for a week or a fortnight in a particular commune and then redeployed to be stationed elsewhere uh, with in another commune under the district. So, when you said yesterday that uh, you would generally stay with the commune soldiers, um, were these district soldiers, in fact, uh, who were assigned to a specific commune, or were these other soldiers? Were you referring to other soldiers? The commune, the communes had uh, their own soldiers, and they were different groups from the uh, district soldiers. And Horn was in charge of uh, district soldiers, not the commune soldiers. And since you were working with Horn, can you tell us why then you would stay with the commune soldiers? President, I have not heard uh, the witness refer to uh, commune soldiers. And, Council, maybe you got confused. Yesterday, the witness testified that the soldiers belong to the district. However, they were stationed in various uh, communes where there were issues, and they would uh, be stationed for a specific period of time and then redeploys to uh, other communes. And that's what the witness testified yesterday, and that's what he is testifying now. He refers to district soldiers who were stationed in various uh, communes in PMT Kong district. So there might have been a problem uh, in the interpretation or in my notes, so no problem, I will clarify this. So can you confirm that when you said that uh, you were staying with soldiers, these were district soldiers? Yes, they were district soldiers as uh, clarified by the president. And can you confirm that Holm himself was a soldier? As I stated from the outset, uh, he was in charge of uh, soldiers, and he was also in charge of the Otokun Security Center. And when he was on a mobile with the soldiers, he would assign his deputy to take charge of the security center. Sometimes he would stay at the center for a week, and then he would uh, leave to various other locations to inspect uh, his uh, soldiers. My, question. My specific question was, uh, was Horn a soldier? And if that was the case, did you know his rank? President, uh, the witness stated that uh, the person was in charge of the district of soldiers as well as in charge of the Otrokun Pagoda Security Center. And witness, uh, please, only uh, respond to the counsel about his uh, military rank. What rank did he hold? Please uh, be brief if you uh, know the response. And if you don't know, you say you don't know. And it is a part of your uh, response. And so he was in charge of district soldiers. So therefore, must I conclude from this that you did not know his rank? Yes, it is correct. I did not know his rank. President, uh, Deputy Co-Prosecutor, do you have the floor? Merci, Mr. President. Thank you, Mr. President.
if there was an error on my part, I don't think it was an it was an, a very serious error on my part. There were no ranks of generals and, and so on and so forth. I believe I heard the witness talk about several units, uh, battalions, and I think uh, there's reference to grades or ranks. But based on the witness's testimony, I cannot uh, discuss this matter. I will have another opportunity to do so. Witness, let me continue with my examination. Still, with regard to the period, during which you work with Han. I would like to talk about the time when at the pagoda you stated that you slept at a particular location in the pagoda. Can you tell the chamber where exactly it was located. You talked of a number of buildings. Can you be more precise? It was at a uh, monk residence, and it was an old existing uh, structure of an, a monk residence. It was not newly built. Can you situate that building in relation to the entrance to the pagoda? It was situated within the compound of the pagoda. I did understand that it was in relation to the entrance. As regards the entrance, was it close to the entrance or was it far off from the entrance? Can you tell us where exactly the monks were staying as you pointed out? Answer, it was behind the main hall. So if I understand correctly, when you went into the pagoda, you had the main building, and then you pass that building, and you get to the building in which the monks were housed. Is that correct? Yes, that is correct. <laughs> Yesterday at 13 hours 47, you stated uh, that the prisoners were interrogated within the premises of a school can you tell us where exactly that school was situated in relation to the pagoda? It was adjacent to the gates of the pagoda. Was it within the premises of the pagoda or outside the premises of the pagoda? Answer. It is it's still it is still located in the same place. There was a building within the compound of that school. I am not sure I properly understood your answer. My question was whether the school was within the premises of the pagoda or outside of the premises of the pagoda. Uh, answer. It bordered uh, along the fence, and it's still in the same location, bordering the fence of the pagoda. The location of the school uh, is now transferred to uh, the authority under different uh, neighborhood. So it border along the fence of the pagoda. When you say that it was adjacent to the pagoda, do I understand that you mean that the school was outside the pagoda? Because you said 
it was near the fence. But was it outside of the pagoda? Uh, we agreed that it was outside of the pagoda. I'm sorry, yes, you are right. Vous avez indiqué que compte you have stated that given your age and your duties, you had nothing to do with the interrogations. Do you know whether those interrogations, oh, who, who carried out those interrogations? Do you remember who conducted those interrogations? Answer. Perhaps it was Bot or Kung. The two individuals were the deputies of uh, Horn. Vous venez de répondre, peut-être? You have perhaps tried to answer the question, but let me draw your attention to the importance of talking only about things you knew and things you witnessed. If you do not know anything, tell me that you do not know. So let me repeat my question. Was it an assumption on your part, or you truly knew who conducted the interrogations? But God. The interpreter could not hear the beginning part of uh, the statement of the witness. Est-ce que vous pouvez répéter, s'il vous plaît, Monsieur? Mr. Witness, could you please repeat your answer? The interpreters didn't hear it. Um, there was only two individuals, Bot and Kuong, who did that. Tout à l'heure, vous avez dit peut-être. A while ago, you said perhaps. Are you sure of your answer now? But, but I am sure. Vous nous avez indiqué que vous ne pas. You stated that you did not attend meetings involving chiefs. That is what you said yesterday. And so you said you knew nothing regarding the work they did precisely. Can we therefore say that you yourself did not know the reasons for the interrogations and how they were conducted? Bah. Answer. Uh, yes, President, uh, please hold on, Mr. Winner. You have the floor now, Deputy International Co-Prosecutor. I would like to object to this question because yesterday the witness indeed said that when he accompanied Horn outside of the commune and so on and so forth, he did not attend meetings, and so he didn't know the contents of those meetings. Now we are talking of another context, the Wat Otakun Pagoda. Um, we uh, know what he told the investigating judges. I don't think he, the situation is same as yesterday. They are not talking of meetings outside of the pag uh, pagoda. They are talking of uh, functions within, or meetings within the pagoda. So this question is designed to confuse the witness, so this question should be rephrased. No problem, I will rephrase it. Witness, is it correct to say that as part of your duties, you did not play any role in investigations or interrogations? Ah. Answer, yes, that is correct. Est-il exact également de dire que les deux... Is it also correct to say that the two persons you left who are in charge of interrogations did not discuss the contents of those interrogations with you? Bah. I'm sorry, yes, that is correct. Est-il exact? Is it also correct to say that you did not know the criteria on which any of the persons involved were interrogated? President, you have the floor now, International Deputy Co-Prosecutor. The Defense Council is asking uh, very restrictive, uh, negative questions. The same questions should be posed openly. For instance, she can ask, do you know 
And if he doesn't know, he can say he doesn't know. So the questions should be open and not closed. I find this very ironical that it is the co-prosecutor who is, is objecting to my questions. We know that his questions are always closed and leading. I believe the questions I'm putting to the witness are very clear and concise. If the witness has other information to provide to me, he, he can do so because the questions I'm putting to the witness are very open because if the, que if the question can be answered with a no, he can do so. May I continue my line of questioning, Mr. President? President, the objection of the international deputy co-prosecutor is correct. The last set of questions put by counsel are leading ones. Uh, witness, you are instructed not to answer these questions. I am rather surprised at the decision, uh, given the fact that I am managing my examination of the witness in a very clear manner, and I take note of your decision. Uh, President, uh, the question are leading ones, as I decided already, is that correct in the question are leading ones? So sometimes I am lenient, but uh, I cannot be lenient forever. Monsieur le témoin. Mr. Witness, as part of your duties and responsibilities, was it possible for you to know the reasons for which one person or the other was interrogated and another was not interrogated? Answer. I am not aware of uh, that issue. I do not know about the interrogation. Je passe maintenant à un I'll go into another line of questioning, still with regard to the Otwakon Pagoda. Yesterday you stated that there was a group inside the pagoda known as the Long Swords Group. Can you tell the chamber what was the difference between the district soldiers and the members of the Long Swords Group? And so the difference is that uh, one group was stationed at the security guards centers and militiamen were to protect and deal with the chaotic situation at uh, different communes for two, three or four days or one week. And when you refer to militias, are you talking of the long swords group? Answer. Those who were on standby at Otokun Pagoda, these people remain on duty within Otokun Pagoda. Et dans le cadre de leur garde à Otokun. And as part of their guard duty at Otokun. What were those militias of the Long Swords Group doing? Answer, I do not know about that. Est-ce que vous savez s'il y avait des groupes de Long Swords? Do you know whether there were other Long Swords groups elsewhere in the Kongnese commune, throughout that commune? Answer. I do not know about that. 
Et est-ce que ce groupe des longues épées était également And was that long swords group also under Han's supervision? Answer. They were under the responsibility of Horn and the deputies. Est-ce que vous connaissez un dénommé? Did you know a person by the name of Samrit Moy? Answer. I did not know this person at the time. President Judge Lavenge, you have the floor. Please wait for a second, uh, Council. You have the floor now, Judge Lavenge. Maître Guissé, je ne mets pas en doute votre capacité à. I am not in a, pos a position to pronounce Khmer perfectly, but it would be uh, good for you to give the witness a document on which that person's name is written so that the witness may be able to read it. Otherwise, perhaps you could ask your colleague who speaks uh, Khmer to pronounce that name. I will ask my colleague Ong Samon to pronounce that name to avoid any difficulties. Do you know a person by the name of Samrit Moy? Well. Kong Sam On, the name uh, mentioned by the interpreters is correct. The name is Moy, Samrit Moy. President, uh, Mr. Vines, do you happen to, did you know the person by the name Samrat Moy in the Khmer Rouge time? Answer, I did not know this person. Même procédé donc pour la personne. I'll use the same approach for the next person. Do you know a person by the name Tai Ki Hoon? Il paraît que ma prononciation était correcte. Donc. It appears that the pronunciation was correct, in principle. Je répète ma question. Donc. Let me therefore repeat my question, Mr. Witness. During the period of Democratic Kampuchea, did you know a person by the name of Tai Kim Hoon? Answer, I did not know this individual at the time. However, when I uh, came to perform my duty as a teacher in my location, I started to know this person. As I said, during that regime, I did not know him. Précisément, vous avez indiqué you specifically stated that you came not too far from the Otuakuan Pagoda as part of your duties. Did you know any committee in the Otuakuan Pagoda? At me and Bob. Answer, no. In Tai Ki Moon, que vous and Tai Ki Moon, whom you say you recently knew or got to know when you returned there as a teacher, how did you get to know that person? How did you meet that person? Mascopi. Answer. I got to know him in 1985 when I was assigned to be a teacher in the location. And uh, it was the time when he was assigned to be the committee within the school that I got to know him. Once again, as I said, I did not know him during the Pol Pot regime. Et sans l'avoir connu sous le régime. 
And even though you may not have known him during the regime, do you know whether he had any particular position under the democratic Cambodia regime? Answer, I do not know about that. Et même question pour, uh, uh, the same question applies to Samrit Moy. Did you also know him after the democratic Kampuchea regime? Answer, I did not know him during the Pol Pot's regime. Where was he uh, living during the time? Could you uh, tell me? President, you have the floor now, Judge Lavagne. For the record, and to be sure that everyone is aware of what you are talking about, it appears, Council, that Samrit Muir is a 2TCW883 and Tai Kim Hoon has a pseudonym which is 2TCW873. Please correct me if, if I am wrong. That is true, because I'm talking about persons who have testified before this chamber. So my question remains the same, witness. I have indeed understood that you didn't know Samrit Moy at the time of the events during the Democratic Cambodia regime. My question is whether you knew him subsequently when you returned to that area. Uh, answer, I did not know him before within the regime, and I want your clarification where he was living uh, during the time, and uh, perhaps I am not quite sure of uh, the name. Uh, and as of now, is he living uh, within the same location as mine? President intervenes. Uh, the question is whether you know a person by the name Samrat Moi within your place of work. After the fall of the regime, did you get to know an individual by the name Samrat Moi? Back from school. And say, yes, I know him. Et comment le connaissez-vous? And how did you get to know him? Did you know whether he had any particular duties and responsibilities in that area? Answer. I know him but I do not know what responsibility he is performing. I am done with my examination of this witness, Mr. President, and I thank you. President. Thank you, Council. Thank you, Witness Moi Vani. The hearing of your testimony as a witness comes to a conclusion now. Your testimony will contribute to the truth. You may now be accused. You may return to your residence or to any destination you wish to go. I wish you good luck, good health, and prosperity. Court officers, please uh, work with the West Zoo Unit to send uh, Mr. Samrat Moi said the president to the residents or to any place uh, he wishes to go. After the break, the chamber will start to hear 2TCW988. The witness has a UT counsel, Mr. Mung Soban, with him or her. It is now break time. The chamber take a short break from now until 10 past 10 to resume our hearing. The court is now in recess.